So I'm still looking at the global map. The numbers here, you may not see that. It's at 785,000. Probably at, before the end of the day, that will be at 800,000 cases that have really quadrupled several times or uh, increased several times over the past a few days or weeks. And um, I want to specifically pay attention to the U.S. This is the U.S. So far, they have a total of 163,000. 655 cases and this is how it looks if you look at on, on the western part of that country that's where most of the cases are concentrated you're talking about the states like uh, new york here no not that one new york there you there you go 67,000 cases confirmed uh, we, uh, we are talking about the deaths at 1227 in new york state alone then if you look at uh, ohio 1,933 uh, cases already confirmed. And these states are important because this is where my colleague Drokas Wangera came from. Good morning, Drokas. Good morning, Sam. How are you keeping? <laughs> I'm keeping well. Um, yeah. But I would say that everyone who knows that I was in the United States tries to keep their social distance. Right. So I, I, I'm imagining how somebody who has had coronavirus would feel now that even just leaving a place with the virus gives you a lot of sort of stigma, mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of like I can imagine. stay away, stay away, yeah. Right, and just for the sake of the viewers, when did you travel to the US and when did you come back? All right, I left for the United States on February the 18th. Mm -hmm. I left our Nairobi via JKIA mm -hmm. to New York, then mm -hmm. to Columbus in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I came back on the 11th, 12th of March, factoring in the time distance. Mm -hmm. And when I came, um, that was on the 11th of March, that's when I left Ohio for New York. Mm -hmm. The previous day, there had been three cases discovered for the first time in Ohio, but mm -hmm. not in Columbus. Columbus is the state capital mm -hmm. in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. And when I got to New York, it wasn't as bad then mm -hmm. as it is now. Right. So um, leaving the airports, uh, you know, like uh, John F. Kennedy Airport is a very busy airport. A lot of traffic, people coming in, people getting out. There was no screening, mm -hmm. even at Ohio at the John. Is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I left, there was no screening there. Everything was so, sort of normal, mm -hmm. you know, even regardless of what was happening. Okay. But then imagining that in just a space of almost three weeks, mm -hmm. looking at 1,993 cases in Ohio and more than 60,000 in New York, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's appalling or it's even just mind-blowing what can happen in a few weeks. You can imagine. Of course, um, of course, I remember that before you left, because now you tell me between 18th and uh, 11th of March, I'm counting about 22 days you're in the U.S. Yes. And I remember before you left, you had been covering the story of the coronavirus outbreak, especially in China. Yes. And some of us are wondering, okay, what is this virus that uh, Dorcas is talking about? So when you are traveling, I mean, were you afraid of... Um, this disease that you've been trying to cover mm -hmm. and now you're moving towards it? Um, you know, with, when you're telling the story, it's different from when you're experiencing this for yourself. Mm -hmm. When we started covering the coronavirus, it started in December, January, February, March. Mm -hmm. People didn't really understand uh, the magnitude of what this virus was. Because every time we talk about China, we would talk about... Um, Italy is just recent when the cases spiked. Mm -hmm. We didn't really understand or feel the full impact. But when you're traveling, you're always cognizant of where am I going and, and is this happening there? But like I mentioned, sometimes you, until you experience it for yourself, you may not feel that fear or that anxiety. Right. Columbus or Ohio in itself is not like New York. Columbus is a more of a Midwestern kind of state, fewer people. New York has so many people with their apartments. When I was going, I wasn't afraid, but when I was coming back, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, they had just discovered the first three cases the previous day. I visited right. a newsroom. And then, but in New York, there were more. But when I was in New York at the airports, there was that sense of, of fear, that sense of, what if you get it? All these travelers, the people mm -hmm. moving around, some people are sneezing, coughing. Were they wearing their masks? <laughs> Um, at the airport, maybe the ones I could identify, um, and this is not a racial uh, observation, but I could see a lot of Chinese people with masks. Okay. But at the airport then, there wasn't that intense kind of screening. When I got back at the JKIA, we had uh, temperature guns, uh -huh. but that was it. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, um, lastly, the, the next day, that was on Friday, is when the president announced the first case of COVID in Kenya. And it so happened that it was a woman from Ohio. Mm -hmm. So people were calling and asking, <laughs> are you the one? I was like, no, <laughs> I didn't come back on the fifth, but I guess now there's that sense, right. that sense of awareness. I don't recommend fear. I recommend being alert, but fear and anxiety, 
there's some sense of just maintaining that okay. and focusing on staying safe mm -hmm. and also protecting the people around you. And when you had that, uh, so you you came here, was it 11th or 12th? The tw 11, I left on, I left the United States on the 11th and I got back here 12th Kenyan time. So 12th of uh, March and then on 13th we, have, we hear yes. the first case and uh, it's an imported case. <laughs> uh, what was the state of your mind at that moment? <laughs> well, I think Ohio. So I had to tell people, look, I didn't come back on the 5th. I'm not that person. Yeah. I came back today and I'm safe. Well, well, the thing that now came up after that was the whole idea of quarantine, self-quarantine, mm -hmm. and now the isolation, especially for travelers for two weeks. And um, I knew, because having been on the front lines reporting about COVID-19 and mm -hmm. the whole idea, having to be responsible for myself and for the people around me, you have this 14 days where you have to self-quarantine. Right. So I guess that, that that's what came up first. How was that for you? Well, um, 14 days has Were you able to self-quarantine, like, uh, <laughs> faithfully? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll say yes. I'll uh -huh. say yes because uh -huh. I live alone, so it's a bit easier. Mm -hmm. And also, it, it means you have to, like you said, prepare your mind. It's more of a mental state than a physical state because mm -hmm. you're not going out. Um, people are, you know, the way when you travel and everyone wants to come and see you, everyone wants to come and find out where have you been, what have you been doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell people that I can't come now, I can't visit now, mm -hmm. um, I have to self quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, the first seven days were a bit manageable, especially mm -hmm. if you have a TV, Netflix, you know, you can watch that. Right. And also, I think the we have a restaurants that deliver food. Right. You know, people like that, you try to work out on that. But you have to maintain the next seven days were a bit difficult because you're used to going out, you're used to being out, you're used to saying hello to people. The only time I did leave the house is when you start monitoring yourself, seeing do I have the symptoms, mm. my coughing, do I have a headache, do you have a sore throat? And you had none of that. And I had none of that. The thing is, when you're in this period of self-quarantine, it's a period of also trying to monitor and see if you are developing any symptoms. Okay. Uh, the, when I started to experience just slight chest pain is when I was like, okay, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And um, you have to call into the hospital facility. So I called in uh, the Avenue Hospital, the Aga Khan University Hospital. Mm -hmm. I had the hospital checkup and they confirmed that the chest pain was because of you, some... You took yourself acid. there or they came for you? I took myself there. But you see, you have to... Like when the minute you start looking and you think, am I developing any symptom? Mm -hmm. It's wiser before going to the hospital to just call okay. because you don't want to overwhelm the hospital facilities. Mm. You want to, you also don't want to get infected because sometimes with this self-quarantine, you're much safer at home than going to the hospital where you have infected people already. Mm. So when I did call the doctors, especially at the Aga Khan University helpline were very helpful. They'll ask you questions. They'll ask you about your history. Mm. So when I did the test for acidity and they cleared me for any other symptoms, and now you have to ask, do I get tested for the coronavirus? And um, I, I would say this because I did interact with the Aga Khan University Hospital and mm -hmm. they have doctors first who look to see if you meet the case specifications before you can test. Mm -hmm. So after 16 days and um, I was clear and plus an extra day now I could come back to work. Okay. And um, now, okay, I've not experienced any fever, any headache, any sore throat, but you're so, all... So, so it has not been necessary to take uh, the COVID-19 test? No, no, it has not. Okay. But, and, and that's the thing, I think, with this, with this kind of testing, um, but I will not speak for, for the other hospitals, but like with my personal experience with the Aga Khan University Hospital. Okay. Because you have so many people who would want to test and you have to give priority to those who are first... We're exhibiting the symptoms. The symptoms. Yeah, but, but someone might wonder, yes, you've done the 14, actually plus two yeah. uh, self-quarantine days, mm. but how do you kill the boredom? Because people are saying, I mean, <laughs> it, it can get to your, to, to your yes. psyche and you start have, developing certain issues with your yes. psychology or psychological health. How do you kill the boredom? Yes, and, and you're, you're very right. And like I said, um, even when we were covering the stories of the COVID-19 with the Kenyans who are, who are quarantined in Wuhan at the time of the lockdown, and that was something that, that kept ringing. Mm -hmm. And um, I keep saying it's a mental state of mind, okay. the mental, the physical. You have first to condition your body that I'm going to be here for 14 days. You have to have a routine. For me, I, I read a lot. You know, when you read, it helps you sort of, when you're reading, you're also creating mental pictures in your mind. Mm -hmm. So find something that can 
give you a routine, find something that can give you some peace of mind. You can read, you can watch movies, you can listen to good music. If you have space, you can do some little bit of exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, last night we did a story about um, children living with autism at this time and they have to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at uh, Sylvia Mora's situation and right. I thought how difficult it must be for people with special needs. Mm -hmm. But if you're a regular person, you know, and you have to to appreciate the finer things in life. And when you're at the time of social distancing, social interconnectedness is important. Mm -hmm. Call people, mm -hmm. you know, WhatsApp, text, you know. Video calls. Yeah, yeah, and also if you have to consume media, which is very important, uh, be aware, mm -hmm. but don't allow yourself to be, you know, anxious and afraid and in a panic mode. All right. Like you'd, I'd always look for, out for updates at 1 p.m., 7 p.m., 9 p.m., mm. this is enough. But social interconnectedness is very, very important. It's pretty important for you to yes. survive this. And of course, yeah, we're happy that you're back. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I know you're having to deal with, uh, of course, people who are still a bit um, yes. yeah. uh, feeling awkward, but all the same. Karibu um, sana. And uh, we're going to talk about the story of the coronavirus disease now. We want